Hey, my name is Ben Pierceman from Ben'sBackwoods.com. I recently produced a full-length axe safety video titled Safe and Efficient Camp Axe Use featuring Holtzbrook's axes. I think the Holtzbrook's axes are fantastic. Um, I personally believe that the axe is one of the most important tools for the northern woodsman. It is also a very dangerous tool. So my goal with this video was to lay out step-by-step uh, uh, safe procedures for using your axe in any condition and also efficient procedures so you can get work done with this tool so you can enjoy this tool. Uh, this video is an hour and 22 minutes. What I did for this YouTube video is I cut down to about uh, 20 some minutes of, of good axe stuff. If you guys want to see the other hour of footage of tips, tricks, axe use, uh, I'll put a link down below for the the Vimeo and for we can, you can purchase the DVD. One of the really important things that I left in this uh, preview cut version was the four S's of safety. Uh, this is explained very well in this video and I chose to go through every chapter and kept a couple clips or a clip at least from each chapter so you guys can see what type of quality the DVD is and what type of skills are covered. So overall in this video, we take you through felling, limbing, bucking, splitting of small saplings to larger uh, trees. Uh, and basically it's focused around camp axe use. So you're not felling huge gigantic trees, but you're being able to buck stuff that you felt find on the ground or standing dead stuff that you're using for firewood. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and I appreciate your support. And remember, if you want to watch the extra hour of footage, link down below for the Vimeo and where you can purchase the DVD on my site. Thanks and stay safe. Hi, my name is Ben Piersma, and we are here to teach you safe and efficient camp axe use. So a little bit about myself and a quick story first. Um, I grew up in the city and on our city lot, we had three big maple trees. Um, this axe here was my, my grandfather's axe and somehow my dad ended up with it and this sat in our garage. And I was probably a 12 year old kid and we had a big storm blow through and a good sized limb came down and fell right in our yard. And I remember waking up and seeing that limb. And the first thing I thought of is I need to grab that ax and chop that limb up. So what I did as a 12 year old kid, probably 30 plus years ago, is I grabbed this ax and I remember picking this thing up and taking a good swing at this branch and the ax bounced and glanced right off it. And I remember thinking to myself, that's dangerous. So here we are 30 plus years later and I'm gonna teach you guys uh, safe ax use. Uh, since then I've, I've lived in the woods of Northern Michigan. I've heated my home with firewood for the last uh, 20 years. I've spent a ton of time camping in the woods, hiking, uh, canoe camping, uh, winter camping, and using an ax and a hatchet throughout all that camping for uh, fire skills. And so we're gonna teach you uh, the tips and tricks to keep you safe and how to efficiently use your ax. So stay tuned. So we're gonna talk about uh, choosing a camp ax. Uh, your first consideration should be uh, you want a tool with high quality uh, steel, so it's gonna hold a, a, a nice sharp edge for a long time. Um, we're using Holtz Brooks axes here for this video. Uh, these are forged in Sweden. Uh, the Swedish steel is extremely high quality. Other brands you may consider, Gransfors Brooks out of Sweden makes fantastic axes. Um, Council Tool uh, makes axes in the USA and they use excellent quality steel. Uh, another option is uh, picking up vintage uh, axe heads at a yard sale and rehandling them yourself. Various tools you can use for sharpening your axe. Uh, a file 
is is a good tool this is good for working out big nicks and gouges uh, this also works well for uh, thinning your cutting edge out uh, the great thing about these holtz brooks axes are they are fairly thin already they're usually thinned right out and the this thin profile if you're looking to uh, fell and limb trees uh, this is what you want a lot of uh, store-bought axes are very thick here they work well for splitting but they do not chop or fell or limb trees well um, so I in general will use a file like this if I really need to uh, uh, thin an edge out or you, you, you hit a stone and gouge or chip this, this uh, cutting edge uh, you can use this to kind of reshape the cutting edge uh, out in the field I usually don't take one of these camping but out in the field what I'll do is, is hang that edge over a log and then um, sharpen this cutting edge just like this and what I try to do is not move my hand towards the cutting edge I try to uh, move my hand parallel with the cutting edge there while the file is still digging in. Uh, this just keeps you safe. Um, and I do, I do a little work on both sides to kind of kind of get an even sharpness. And if, if you're using a file a lot, uh, this is a, a file brush, Nicholson file brush. This is going to extend the life of your file, uh, which is great. Um, but I, in general, will just use a file for uh, uh, shaping a head or working out big nicks and gouges. So to maintain an axe, one of the, uh, the, the big things we want to do is we want to keep this handle oiled up. Um, the handles in axes have the ability to, to expand and contract. They, they'll absorb moisture from the ground and they'll dry out when you bring them in your house. And the, the big concern is to keep this head on tight. And so the wood that runs through the, the eye of this axe um, we want to keep this saturated with oil and I even put a little uh, a wax or, uh, or a snow seal over top of this. Um, as you're using an axe in the, in the winter or the rain or outdoors, a lot of times you set it down on the ground like this and this eye is coming in contact with the ground and the ground moisture. Uh, so if we can keep this from absorbing moisture, um, we're going to keep the head on here tight and it's going to just, uh, uh, our axe handle is going to last a lot longer. So. I use boiled linseed oil, and this is the most popular thing people use on these uh, these axe handles. These axe handles are not uh, coated with uh, polyurethane. Um, so what I do, and we'll do this quick, is uh, this is a new axe. Is I'll just pour a little bit on here, and um, on a rag. Uh, the main handle, I don't put it on too thick. I don't get too crazy with this. A couple nice uh, light coats. Um, it's kind of the way to go. Um, so I'll kind of rub that, rub that in nice and easy. Make sure we get the end grain here. And I'll make sure I get it really worked in around the... Uh, the eye down here at the bottom where, it, where the axe opens up there. Oops. But most importantly we want to we want to really saturate that wood where the wedge is. Uh, another option too is you can take a really shallow dish or uh, baking pan and put oil in it and set this uh, the axe in there overnight and let that really absorb um, or you can just on, on these axe eyes what I'll do is I'll coat it heavy and let it sit overnight or so and then give it another coat kind of keep an eye on it because this this wood will will absorb this oil another trick I use though once I've got this oiled up and saturated well um, I like snow seals got some beeswax in it I use this a lot on, on leather products uh, I'll use it on axe uh, sheaths that type of stuff or even a candle wax but I'll take that and 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 rub some wax over over that uh, that wood once it's saturated with that oil or use this uh, the snow seal and I just feel like this seals it off um, and keeps that uh, keeps that eye from drying out especially in the winter the winter and the cold months the wet months is when you can have issues so
you can uh, set this out in the sun or set it near a heater and let it let it heat up and, and let it absorb um, but I feel like that does a really a really good job there and it's a good a good trick All right, so this is a quick talk about wood fibers. Um, understanding wood fibers is gonna make it a lot easier for you to process wood. Uh, wood is actually gonna be like a bundle of straws and it's very strong when the structure's all together like this. Um, but as we chop through it, um, we weaken that structure so we, so we can break it or process our wood. Uh, this is a trick I, I show my uh, students. Um, I'll have them take a knife and and we'll pretend this is a this is a tree and this is kind of a felling chop so what we'll do is we'll, we'll do a little push cut and what we want to always do is cut through those fibers on a 45 degree angle this cutting straight against these fibers is not going to penetrate very deep um, cutting on a 45 and I'll do a little push cut there um, slices through the fibers and gets and gets you a little deeper into the wood um, now what we do this would be considered your first chop here is your second chop we always raise slightly above because this wood now now that we slice through these fibers these wood fibers up here are not supported so that same force slightly above is going to go deeper into the wood and if we got to raise up again and slice again that same force goes even deeper so understanding how those fibers work will be to your advantage when you're felling trees you throw one chop in there raise up another chop and raise up again one more chop and the same force you're using uh, slowly works through those wood fibers okay so now we're going to talk about the uh, terms that i use when i'm swinging an axe and and working an axe uh, swing clearance is is number one you want to make sure whatever position that you're in that when you take that axe and you swing it up behind you or you swing it off to the side that this axe does not get caught in in a, a guy line for your tent in an overhanging branch um, that that can end up being a bad situation if if the axe goes where you don't want it to go so you make sure every time that you're gonna gonna fell a tree or do work with an axe take a good look May stretch your arms out a little bit take a good look about about where your swing path is going to be and make sure you have full free clearance so this thing doesn't get snagged on anything and you get hurt all right so now i want to talk to you guys about the the four s's of safety um, when using an axe uh, the first s is you want a sharp tool you want to keep your tools sharp this enables them to bite into the wood when you're swinging a dull tool is dangerous because you have to work it too hard and because instead of biting into that wood that axe head would have a tendency to glance out and 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 cause mistakes so a sharp tool is a must keep your tools sharp and um, and the, they're going to work a lot better for you and be a lot safer stability is the next s when i say stability it's it's you yourself uh, standing in a way that's stable and comfortable usually with your legs spread apart but it is also the the logs or branches you're swinging against if you can set them up in a stable way on a stable platform if you can set them up on on a safety log and and chop into something that doesn't bounce around when you swing at it this is going to make it much more efficient uh, to transfer that energy and to uh, to cut through your wood so making sure you, you can get in a stable position yourself your body and also the wood that you're chopping the next s on the list and this is a, a very important one is to slow down you can over tire yourself very quick with an axe whether you're splitting firewood or whether you're, you're trying to fell a tree slow down uh, swinging too hard and too fast is the most common mistake people think they're going to chop through something by swinging harder and faster you lose accuracy you exhaust yourself the potential for a accident um, is is high when you're fatigued and when you're when you're working harder than you need to so so slow down a lot of hand tools work at a slow speed you have to pace yourself and this is how you're going to uh, get work done with with a hand tool such as an axe the next s is safe follow through this is this is also important on your, this all kind of ties together your stability, your stable platform, 
how you're standing with your body in a stable position. You have to understand that when you swing that ax, you're creating a certain amount of momentum and inertia. And whether that ax bounces off that branch, digs in, or possibly blows straight through the branch in case that, that tree that you're chopping is rotted, sometimes frozen wood, things will glance off. And you want to make sure that you place your body in a way that that follow through is safe. That, that if that ax does what you don't want it to do, it is not gonna come back and, and cut yourself in the, in the leg or the foot. So, so those four S's are important. Sharp tools, um, stability, slowing down, and safe follow through. If you can follow those four rules, you're gonna be far ahead of the game as far as keeping yourself safe and getting work done with this tool. Okay, so here we are. We're going to talk about um, harvesting uh, saplings, small trees. Um, these three trees here, all fighting for the same sunlight, the same rain, water. Um, and so we're actually not hurting anything by taking these two small trees down. Um, it's gonna help this tree grow, grow bigger into a full mature size. Um, so we're kind of, we're selectively pruning. So that's just definitely something to keep in mind when you're harvesting trees is to uh, prune the forest. Um, really, really small stuff like this. Uh, a quick technique is I'll just really just choke right up on an ax or, or hatchet and I'll bend this thing over, which stresses the fibers and just a quick flick of the wrist, quick pop like that and you're, and you're usually through. So that's, oh, that's that guy there. So we'll get this one out of the way. And now this one here, uh, the technique I use for these small trees, what I gauge this on is the width of the cutting edge on your ax. Um, so any tree that is smaller in diameter than, than the width of your cutting edge, which this one is here, I will use this technique. Once you're harvesting trees that are, that are wider than your cutting edge, we're gonna, use, we're gonna use a different type of felling technique. So this right here is what we're gonna call a V cut. We're gonna cut a 45, a chop right here and a 45 degree angle down. And then we're gonna chop on the exact opposite side, a 45 degree angle down, and you're gonna end up with a stump with a V on it. Uh, to keep this safe in this area here, we're gonna chop, I'm on my knees. I'm gonna chop uh, really close to the ground here so we can harvest the full tree. And the idea is if you're chopping close to the ground here, that if you do glance off or it skips off, it's gonna go into the ground and the ax cannot come back and hurt you. Um, also, uh, depending, on, depending on what kind of room you have, you, this, this might be an area where you, don't, you can't take a full uh, felling swing where you're maybe a little more choked up on this ax, which gives you a lot more control, a um, lot more accuracy. You don't need a ton of power to, to harvest a tree this size. Um, and what we'll do too, and we'll, we'll see how this goes is, uh, throw a 45 degree chop down there. And then like we talked about the wood fibers before, we'll raise up slightly from that chop and throw another 45 degree chop in which should penetrate deeper. And the goal is just to go about halfway through or so, so we can jump to the other side and do the same thing over there. So um, here we go. Um, Another thing, another consideration that we talked about as far as safety goes is making sure you have swing clearance. Like I don't have anything right around me here. I can come back with this ax with a swing and it does not get caught up in any uh, overhanging uh, branches or anything like that. So, so we're safe. So we're gonna come down here and give the first chop as a 45 and that did pretty well. We're not quite halfway through. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna aim chop slightly above that because those those fibers are not supported now and it's going to penetrate deeper so let's see what kind of aim we have so here we are uh, limbing some uh, larger trees uh, these are larger limbs and like we said before we want to start at the uh, at the trunk and work your way to the tip um, to be safe, you want to either your your frontal zone is extends straight out, straight out like uh, in line with your feet, parallel with your feet, and um, you either st stand so your your swing ends up coming in contact with that wood, 
kind of behind your frontal zone. So if it glances off, it can't, it can't hit you in the leg. Uh, in this case, the main body of this tree is large enough where, where the, the tree itself is gonna protect us. So I can stand straight like this. This is gonna be kind of a, kind of a, almost like a golf swing. Uh, you you uh, slide your hand up the top, bring the ax head up, put your hands together and swing straight down. We're gonna try to go right for the base here. We'll see if I can blow through these in a couple chops. Uh, there's a little different technique for thicker stuff. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens here. So we're gonna, yep, that's just straight through there on that guy. Here's one coming straight up and I'll, for this one I'm gonna bend down and just get out of the way. I just wanna keep, make sure my follow through is back through here in case this thing glances off where it can't get me. And that's nice and easy. Um, now we get to something like this, this is slightly larger. And so if I don't think I'm gonna chop through it in one or two chops, what I'll do is I'll, I'll come about halfway through this limb and, and maybe score it down like this. And now that, that kind of, uh, that thin that limb out so it's gonna be easier to blow through it. So that's a nice clean cut. Uh, same thing with this guy here. If you can get them right at the base, uh, they're a little quicker. This one here, now we're on this side, of the, we're on the same side of the tree, so the tree's not protecting us here. So now I'm gonna limb here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my body sideways like this, and this swing is gonna come across and, and come into contact with that tree about in line with my leg, because by the time that cutting edge is in line with my leg, if it bounces off with the, with the momentum you have, it's going to bounce off behind you, and it, it's not gonna come back and get you. Uh, so I'll stand here and give it a good, uh, give it a good swing like that. And that's safe because it came into contact in line with my leg or behind me. And uh, that makes that, that really safe. Um, having a sharp tool is uh, super important. Uh, some, of the, some of these small things, you can actually use the pole of an ax to kind of tap them off. Here's another one that's uh, right in way. And it's a lot of this too, when you're working in a tangled mess like this, you wanna make sure, take the time, don't rush, clear some of the stuff out of here. You wanna make sure your swing is nice and free and clear. It's not gonna get hung up on stuff. Position your body in a way so you will have a safe follow through. Uh, this is a very stable platform right now because it's a heavy dead down tree and uh, we've got a sharp tool. Uh, we're not gonna work too fast. We're gonna slow down and set our pace here and just slowly, work at this thing and, and clear out and you just you just need to be uh be conscious to move your body in a position so so you will not chop yourself on accident with the momentum that that the axe is creating here's another another example of a bigger limb that that we might be able to just kind of blow through like that so that's uh that's that's quick and easy work and just just slow down and make sure uh you're in a safe safe position every every chop that you make all right so here we are uh, we're going to talk about splitting and we're going to talk about uh splitting a uh, larger wood uh, maybe stuff you bought at a, at a camp store uh, maybe you you had a chainsaw or a sweet saw bow saw and you, you cut uh, some rounds and uh, the first technique i want to show you is is splitting some stuff on the ground if you if you don't have a, a stump to split on um, this is the 28 inch uh, boys axe which is, it's not really a splitting axe but it does a pretty pretty good job on this size stuff so this is a technique that i feel like is pretty safe and i like to use i'll put a, a smaller stick on the ground like this and then set the, the log right on top of it and hang it over just a just a touch where you want to split it and what you do is you stand up here and you split straight through your legs what you do is you want to grab your axe here and you kind of want to uh, anchor your, your hand right off right off to the uh, on the side of your leg here so you don't hit yourself hit yourself dead on there and the split happens right here your follow through goes behind your leg and so this is what keeps it safe so you come through here there we go that, that started the split there and a lot of times too I'll use my axe almost as a fro we keep the blade stuck in there and I'll pry a little bit with the uh, the axe off the side and uh, that works there we'll see if we get one that works a little a little better here, hang it over the edge. Cut straight through it there. Let's see about this guy here. So here's a technique. Um, if you're splitting with a, a, a kind of a lightweight felling axe or boy's axe, and you're trying to deal with larger size wood, um, if you have two axes available, uh, this is kind of a handy technique. I will 
throw throw the axe in there and it kind of it'll get stuck because it's not going to split through i'll turn this thing around and what i'll do is try to try to hit on that side with another axe and what that usually does is it loosens this one right up and you're kind of playing this game where you're hitting one side loosening it up and eventually you're going to kind of nice and easy work your way through this thing uh, like I said before, I do this a ton. Use your axe blade kind of like a, a fro. You got that in there, and now you can take the handle. I wouldn't, I wouldn't work this thing too super hard. You don't want to break your handle. But nice and easy stuff. Uh, you can peel stuff apart like that, and that works. That works just fine. <laughs> 